Trials do three things. Trials test what is on the inside of you. Trials test what is on the inside of you. Athletes, for instance, when, when they, as they're preparing their bodies, especially professional athletes and, and these, these, these marvelous athletes, even amongst the professionals, they, you, you know, you get to that professional level and then you got a, a professional or professionals. You know, this is when you talk about the Michael Jordans, the LeBron Jameses, the Kobe's. Uh, you, you're talking about the Walter Paytons, the Jim Browns, the Barry Sanders type folks on, on, in, in football. And in, these people seem to excel even above those who are already at that top level. You know, what's the difference? What makes the difference in these folks? It's the trials they put themselves through that makes the difference. They're willing to put themselves through the hardship, through, through, the, through, the, through, the, through the tough pains. They wouldn't have put, put themselves through the, all the harsh workouts. And they're willing to spend the time that it takes to, get, to get, build themselves up so they become greater than which they're, they're fighting against. Greater than the obstacle that's before them. Greater than the giant. And the giant really represents the larger than life issue that they're faced with. This wonderful series, I, I've really been enjoying it as far as the basketball series. It's called, um, I forget the even name of it. But it's talking about the Michael, Michael Jordan and the, and the Bulls as they were doing their, their run for championships in the, in the 90s. When I look at that and look at how some of the things they had to go through to finally become champions, how they had to face a tough Detroit team, that was an obstacle before, obstacle before them to get to this, the final goal of being a champion. They didn't, it didn't happen for them right away. Two years they had to face Detroit. Detroit let them have it. They just, I mean, beat them down. And when I look at that, I says, wow. Detroit was their giant. That was their giant. But for them to get better, for, for them to actually win the championship, they had to get better. They had to get bigger and stronger in the giant before the giant that was before them. And so if we're understanding this right, if, if we're trying to put this in the right context, all of us, have to get better and, and, and to grow stronger, grow stronger in our mind, grow stronger in our bodies if we're ever going to defeat the giants that are before us. A lot of our fights are emotional or mental. That means we've got to become stronger in our minds, stronger in our hearts. Uh, There's very few of our fights that may be physical, but once again, we still got to become stronger also in our bodies if we're going to defeat certain obstacles that are before us. So for us to overcome the giant, okay, we must become bigger and greater than the giant. We, have all, we all have to become greater than our giants if we are going to overcome them. Okay, we can't let our giants stand before us and always scare us, always push us into a corner, always push us backwards, because then our giants become even larger than they already were. I mean, they, bec they, they become almost titans in our eyes. And a titan is something in our eyes, most times we feel we cannot defeat. But be, be careful here. We've got to be so careful because, see, we know our God has given us the strength we need in, in our bodies, in our minds, in our hearts, within our spirit to overcome the greatest of giants. The problem is how we view the giant. See, if we see ourselves so small that we can't fight what's before us, then we will refuse to fight. If we see ourselves not putting ourselves in a position to win or we, or we can't get into that position to win, then we will not win. Because once again, we don't even think we can win. If we think we can't win, then we refuse to fight. If we refuse to fight, then we're going to sit there, okay, and become small and live in fear of anything that comes before us that we think that's greater than us. So, and that's not the way we're supposed to live our lives, Christians. We're supposed to live our life in victory no matter what. The next thing, okay, a trial does. Trials stretch your limits. Trials stretch your limits. So the first thing was trials test what's on the inside of you. The second thing is trials stretch your limits. I love this uh, thought process that the Navy SEALs have written down and put in books. It's called the 40% rule. When a person is fully exhausted and, and they've done as much as they could, you know, physically and, and mentally, they think they're done. The Navy SEAL says, you're basically, you're at 40%. You have 60% left inside of you to move forward. And when I started looking into, into this and started researching it, I realized, wow, this is, this is an awesome thing because if 60% of, of our um, ability is still left inside of us, when we think we're at our lowest point, we have a lot more to give. See, if you have that thought process, you can only give what you have. Okay, I understand that. But most of us have a lot more to give. Because even when, we, when we're done, we're finished, we're really only at 40%. You know, it's something because inside of us, we, we have what you call an internal governor. Okay, and that when we get tired, when we're running, you know, that internal governor says, you know what, you've done enough. 
you, you, you're at your wit's end. You, you can't go any further. You know, some of us may feel a little weak in our body. Like we may feel like, man, I feel a little faint. I may feel a little dizzy. You know, but we, if you, if, when you have that mental toughness about you, you know, when you have a good coach, you know, when you have the Lord behind you, you know, you tend to push past those weak moments. And that's the goal for the Navy SEALs is to get people, uh, get their SEALs ready in, in preparation to push past those moments where they think they can't give no more, where, where they think they're done and they think they're finished. Wait, no, you're not finished. You're only at 40%. You have 60 more percent to give. And when we start taking that in, I, I want you guys to get this, that it's time for us to push and continue to push. Here in James, it says, Blessed is the man who remains fast, steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. And that was James, James 1.12. James 1.12. So if we remain steadfast, if we do not give up, if we just continue past our weakest moments, continue past our, our, our points where we, where we have so much pain that we can't go forward anymore, we will see the victory on the other side of what we're going after. But we must continue to move forward. We must continue not to quit. Now, I want to explain, explain the eternal governor that I'm talking about. Because really, it's a limiter. When you think of old, the old school cars, the old school cars were, were awesome. You know, we think about these muscle cars and we think about the speed some of these old school cars had. But a lot of these old school cars were built with an internal governor. And that internal governor basically was this. If you had a car that read around 120, 140 on the dashboard, the truth of the matter, most times those cars wouldn't even go above 100 miles per hour. It's not that the car could not do it. They put a little device inside those cars that would not allow them to usually go above 100 miles per hour. And the reason they did that is for the safety of the person driving the car. See, it limited what the car was able to do, and it usually was done to, to make sure it was saving the person's life. You know, make sure they couldn't go out of control too, or go too far in, in, with their speed. Okay, to make sure they don't hurt themselves or hurt somebody else. We have the same thing that resides inside of our mind, inside of our body. Okay, and that internal, that, that internal limiter, or that, that internal governor rather, what it does, okay, is it wants to keep us in our comfort zone. I want you guys to get this. And so as soon as we, we push it hard and hard, as soon as we, we, we do everything we can to move forward, it seems like once we hit a certain mark, that internal governor kicks in and we have to step back. And, oh, I've done all I can do. I'm, I'm at my wit's end. I, I'm... I'm, I'm kaput. I, I, I'm, I got nothing else to give. But truthfully, you're only at 40%. Okay, you have a lot more to give. You just don't feel like it. So the goal now is to push past your feelings and emotions. The goal now is to, to let you, no, do not let your feelings and emotions sit there and, and dictate to you what you can and cannot do. And this is when the Bible is so important to me. This is when God is, is so important to me in his word because, see, God is that motivator to me. God is that encourager saying you can push through this. Okay, just don't give up. Because if you don't give up, I'm going to be here with you, okay, and we'll start knocking things down together. So don't give in to what you're feeling right now. Don't give in to the pressure. Don't retreat. It's not time for you to surrender because it's never a time for you to surrender when you're with the Lord. We don't give something the victory over us when we, know, when we know we're in right standing with God. I need you guys to get that this morning because some of our battles, if we don't win, our life is over. If some of our battles we don't win, our marriages is over. If some of our battles we don't win, we lose relationships. We, we, we lose certain things in our lives if we do not win. So it's not, for us to, it's not for us to sit here and cower and not fight. It's for us to stand in the power of God. Amen? I want to go a little further. Because I have to talk about this comfort zone. The comfort zone is a killer of our dreams. I mean, some of us have been tested so much in life, we're just thankful, okay, of being where we are. Even in my own life, I realize I have gotten to this place where I'm just happy with things being okay. I'm satisfied. You know, the Bible says, it's, you know, it's good for a man to be content in all situations. Paul says, I'm I'm I learn how to be content when, when things are going well for me. I learn how to be content when things are going bad for me. That's being content, meaning that I'm not having the worst days in the world because things are not the way I want them to be. Simply put, you don't have to be satisfied, though, with that. See, I'm, when you become satisfied with being mediocre, see, when I'm talking about being okay, I'm just talking about being in the middle. I'm not talking about winning. I'm just talking about being okay. There's nothing, nothing good about being, <clears throat> excuse me, nothing good about being uh, happy with being mediocre. 
Okay, I don't want to be in the middle. I don't want to be average. Okay, I want to be at the best person that I can be. I, I want to be the, the best Charles that God made me to be. And because I want to be that best Charles and using all the gifts and talents he put inside of me, okay, I, I should be moving forward and, and impressing towards the, the future and, and the present God has planned for me. But I have to understand that there's going to be some things pressing back. Satan doesn't want you, okay, to be at your top best level. Why? Because if you're always at the top and your best level, you're going to be achieving things for God and for your family that he never wanted you to achieve. But look who's trying to hold you back. Look who's giving you the doubt, the doubt in your mind and, and, and the negative thought process inside of you to hold you on a place where, you know what, it's just okay for me to be here. I'm comfortable. My family's okay. I, 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 I'm doing this with my, you know, my, my spouse. And No, that's not who you're supposed to be. Okay, we Christians, we're supposed to be living at the top level like God has wanted us to live. Okay, as long as we're with him and doing the things that he wants us to do, we're living in our purpose. Right? He says our gifts and talents will make a way for us. And if our gifts and talents are going to make a way for us, they're going to bring us even before kings. Our gifts and talents were meant to elevate us. They were meant to take us to that next level. They were never meant to or given to us so we could just sit there and be okay. Where we sit there and be mediocre. No, God didn't plan a mediocre life for me. And I know he didn't plan it for you. So and because I know he didn't plan it, that mediocre life for us, he planned this life of abundance, this life of being the head and not the tail, okay? Of being in victory and not being defeated. And because I know God has planned that life for me, I'm going to live in that promise. I'm done with being okay. I'm done with being okay. I, I'm going to live in the success God has planned for me. But I understand that that starts in my mind first. That starts with me in my heart with me trusting and believing in God. And when he tells me to step out in the area that I move and the things that he tells me to move out on too. Okay, and when things get a little frightening around me, for me not to pay so much attention to that fear, okay, so much be, not to be frightened that I can sit there and live in the victory that he's planned for me. Fear cannot move me. Okay, and that's gonna that's gonna be my my that's gonna be my speech. That's gonna be the thing I say. That's gonna be my affirmation. Fear should not move me. So even though it may swirl all around me, like King David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, my God is with me. His rod and his staff they comfort me. It's a walk. I'm not running because nothing around me can get to me. This shield is covering me. God is with His hand of protection around me and my family and my life. So I'm going to move in that protection. Now, I know that my past, I've done some things that are wrong. I know some things may not be, have, may have not been good about me. But at the same time, my past is now behind me. And my confession also is I'm not going to hold nobody to their past as I'm not going to hold my past against me. See, one thing I realize you can't free yourself from. You can't free yourself from the, you can't free yourself from the judgments you hold against others. That simply means you also hold judgment against you. And that's some of the things that keep you shackled up in this life. That's some of the things that keep you still broken in this life. So we have to let go of the things that keep us shackled and broken. We have to let go of the things that hold us back and keep us tied up. It's time to let it go. Jesus has already opened the prison door. It's time for us to walk out, not sit there and look and cower in the same corner. The door is open. It's time for us to move forward now. Amen? I want to talk about Philipp real quick scripture, Philippians 4.13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I love this in Isaiah 40.29. He says, he gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. That's Isaiah 40.29. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Wow. So even when I think I'm at that weakest moment, even when, 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 I, when I think I can't go no further, further, I'm increasing your strength. Okay, I'm the one that's going to build you up. I'm the one that's going to build you here and build you here. I'm going to increase you. So when you think you have no more, make sure you call upon me. Because I'm the one that's going to increase you. I'm the one that's going to take you to that next level. Okay, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's my Lord that helps to take me to that next level. I am more than an overcomer through Christ Jesus. Amen? Let's go a little forward, further. I think a little sometimes when I was younger, and being, being I'm not an athlete anymore, but being a young athlete, I remember those times when I used to go to practice, and especially when we start up, like, first starting football, first start getting in shape out there with the coaches. 
You go out there and you may be running for an hour and a half, two hours straight. You're just running, doing different drills, and it's nonstop for the whole two hours. I would come home sometime and after about two or three hours of me sitting, I mean, my, my legs, my hips, my butt, my, my hamstrings, everything was just like they were locked up, like I could barely move. I mean, I can't hardly walk because I'm hurting so bad. And I used to think to myself, how am I gonna go play in the morning? And I, this is as a young kid, you know, kids and, and, and young adults, they recover fast, <laughs> you know? And I used to think, man, I, I gotta wake up and do this again tomorrow? But it's something. As you know, your coaches are pushing you and, and you get out there and you try to run and, 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 you, and you, you try to maneuver as your body starts to warm up, warm up that pain starts to leave. Okay, you, you, you soon forget about that old pain, okay, and you're just taking the task in front of you. A lot of us need to start living our lives like that. Where we're holding on, because if we're holding on to the old pain, okay, and we keep holding, continue holding on to it, we fail to get out there and do the new thing. We have to go back to that childlike mindset. Yeah, I may be in some pain, but it's going to go away. So as soon as you get out there and get ready to play, you forget what's behind you. You forget the old pain because now you're moving towards the good things moving forward. And that's exactly what we need to do. Forget the old pain. Forget the old life. Forget everything's behind me. I can't change yesterday. But today, I can live in the present and I can do things to help me and, and my family for my future. I'm going to push that pain behind me now because my future is so, so vivid before me, I, I have to let that go because it's, it's messing me up my picture. So I got to get rid of those old things. I have to allow them to leave my life. Amen? Let's pick up here. The last thing is trials. This is the third thing that trials do. Trials allow you to know where you currently are. Where you currently are. Trials allow you to know where you currently are. Lamentations 3, chapter 3, verse 40. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 40. It says, let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. Let us test and examine our ways. Once we are going through the trial, once we are being tested, it lets us know where we currently are. And I thank God that he gives us victory. I thank God that he runs us through the trials. Because see, it's nothing like going through, it's nothing like going through the hardest test in the world to you. And then when you finally come on top, come out on top of it, the, 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 the celebration, the victory that you have in that, I mean, it's, it's, I can't even give words to it of, of the, the feeling that you have on the inside when you know that you're more than an overcomer. When you know you overcame that thing that was meant to kill you or when you know you overcame that challenge, okay, that you couldn't do before. Could be that, that's, it's, it's, it's a, I want to say almost like a pride or a feeling that you have on the inside of you. That it just, it brings just this exuberant, a praise out of you, this, 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 that thought process, I mean, the happiness and the joy that you feel. There's nothing like it when you overcome this trial and this hardship that you weren't able to get over. Because see, some trials, some hardships, you may have to go through them a, a two or three times before you actually become vict become a victor over those giants. Because those larger, larger life issues, sometimes they've been with you so long, they're not easy to defeat. See, if we had our choice, those, those issues in our lives, those giants that we face, you know, we wanted, we would like, to, if we had our choice, we would face them in the infant stages, right? Let me go jump on this now. Let, let me get it out of my way as, as soon as possible so it be, doesn't become big in my life. But a lot of times, we don't even realize the trial or the problem or the issue is even before us. Okay, and a lot of times when we see that when the trial is, 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 or the difficulties uh, full grown, okay, when it's at, at its worst, we finally open our eyes and say, well, man, this is a problem in our life. And now instead of us attacking something that's small, we're addressing something that's full grown. Very large size. But that's okay. Just because something has been magnified in our life, something be, just because something has become bigger in our life, that doesn't mean our God is not bigger than that thing. Our God is the biggest thing in, 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 as far as we are concerned in this world. Okay, there's nothing greater than our God. There is no name above the name of Jesus. And simply because I would call upon that name and that he will increase my strength, he will help me with my willpower, he will encourage me and continue to motivate me to walk with him, I know that I can defeat even the greatest of giants, even the largest of titans. But I must stay with him. Because I'm not relying on my own power anymore. I'm relying on the power of the, of the God inside of me. So I thank God that he gives us that strength. I thank God that he gives us that energy. I thank God that he gives us that power to move forward. So when you know in society, or rather when you, when you figure out that you're not a quitter, 
that's a big deal to you. So when you figure out you're, you're not a quitter, that's a huge deal to you. When you figure out that you can persevere through all the hard times, through all the, the, all the trials, all, all the difficult situations, that's a big deal to you. When you figure out that you are a giant killer, that's a big deal to you. See, God already knows and sees all things, right? So he knows hey, when you're going to overcome something. He knows when you're going to come out of something. But it's important that you know, okay, that you're more than an overcomer. Because, see, when you know something here, you live that way. When, when, you, when you finally get it throughout your whole system, your whole body, within your soul and within your spirit, you live that way. So it's so important that you prove things to yourself. Because when you finally prove it to yourself that you're a victor, when you, probably, when you finally prove to yourself that you're the giant and not the problem, you, you understand that I got the power to move forward. Okay, nothing's holding me back. And I look at some of these great athletes, I look at some of these people that have done some of the greatest things uh, in this world. They had got it on the side, in, on the inside of them. They says, I am number one here. Okay, I, I, I can, no problem, no problem's going to become number one in my life. Because I'm with God, okay, I know I'm number one here. Okay, no problem can take that place. No issue can take that place. No tribulation can take that place. I have become greater because the Lord is inside of me. He has made me the victor. He has made me the head. When we start living our lives that way, when we start understanding who we are and the power of God that resides inside of us, okay, we truly start act, acting out in our actions. Okay, as we're the true, as we are the true giant. Okay, and not the problems and not the issues. Amen. So your gifts and your talents, your abilities, were given to you to serve yourself, but also given to you to serve your family and to serve others. All the benefits that God has put inside of you, okay, all, all the things that He's given you were for you to be a blessing to others for Him. The Bible says we were created for good works in Christ Jesus. Okay, we were saved by grace, but we were created to do good works through Christ Jesus. So if we were, all, we were created to do good works, we were created with the gifts that, and the cause that God put inside of us, okay, to benefit others. And we have to understand that. But you cannot help others if you can't help yourself. I Meaning you can't give what you don't have. And so to God, and until God gives us these trials, until we pass these trials, rather, until we come through these trials, okay, we don't truly understand the strength that we have on the inside of us. I look at some of these wonderful speakers. I, lo I love Joyce Myers. I like Lisa Nichols. Of course, I like people like Tony Robbins. I, I like a lot of these guys, these public speakers. But I think about some of the issues that they bring up and some of the things they had to go through in their lives. But those things elevated them. They brought them to that next level. It, 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 they keep them where they were. Sometimes they have to cry through it. Sometimes they have to deal with the pain and the hurt that they, of, of going through the tribulation. But they came, because they didn't quit, they became victors. And they came out on the other side. So that's the way we're supposed to be. Okay, yeah. But the scriptures say, uh, crying may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. You know, and I love that thought process. I love the natural thought process. When the morning comes, it's a new day. Okay, but morning, truthfully, for Christians, is when you wake up. When, when you wake up within your spirit, when you wake up within your mind, that's when joy is going to take place. Because, see, that joy, when, when you wake up, means when you become a new person. When you change your mindset, joy is coming because you're a changed person. So I thank God that joy is coming in the morning. I thank God that he's giving me the right mindset and he's building the right mindset within me. Okay, all at the same time because see, every day I can become more better. Every day I can get, become a little more newer than I was yesterday. Every day I can become stronger in each and every way because God has given me that ability. So I thank God that my joy is here. I thank God, even though I was praying for it, I thank God, even though I was praying for this new thing, he brought it by way of trial because he's leveling, he's leveling up me or leveling me up, brother. I thank God for the way he brings us to the next level. Even though he does a lot of times through difficulty, I realize it's through the process that I have to go through. It's where I learn how to handle the blessing or the victory that comes out on the other side of it. Amen.